In the first of a three-part mini-series here, I plan to talk about 180 Scouts, 180 Hand Cannons, and 150 RPM Scouts. Now, each archetype, they got a recent buff. I want to talk about what they bring to the table. And with those buffs, there are things that you need to know, and there are things that people aren't bringing up and more. The 180 Scouts haven't been used in PvP since year 1D2. 180 Hand Cannons had a rise with Luna and Not Forgotten, but that was more of a Mag Howl meta. There was some usage with 180s in between. The 150 Scouts, varying usage, not really meta. You mostly saw J-Rabbit. So I first want to start with these 180 RPM Scouts, the top four. And in my eyes, at least, it depends on what you have. But before we get started, a reminder, I am partnered with Apex Gaming PCs, and next week on their social media, they are giving away a full PC setup. Go follow them on Twitter at Apex Gaming PCs and be ready. And they're also doing free shipping on all US orders over 2,500. And that promotion can be combined with my code COOLGUY to save up to $250 off of your order. There's a link down below right at the top of the description. And go follow them on their socials and get entered into the giveaway for the full PC setup. We never really had a reason to use these 180s in the Crucible. Things have changed though. Are they meta? I don't quite think so, but there are situations where they can be dominant. And here's some staccato gameplay, it's on the list, but for the 180 Scouts, they increase the body damage from 34 to 38, the crit moves from 54.4 to 60.8. It can 2 crit 2 body against 197 health or lower. Kills in 1.33 and body shots against 190 and lower. 1.67 against high resilience. So this is a big deal. It skyrockets their ease of use. And unless a player's near max resilience, it's gonna two crit two body. But with this buff, what you need to know and remember is the main thing, number one, the ease of use out of the gate is what they have going for them. Number two, you need to remember it still has a base one second TTK. It is still one of the slowest killing primaries in the game. The buff doesn't change that. But in turn, at number three, what it does change is the total lethality with added in perks and buffs. So to me, when I look at these and using them, there are two reasons to run a 180 scout. First way, if you were to set it up as a super dueling weapon, leaning hard into dueling, there's one on this list that can do it. Second, kill perks, adding damage. Most of you are doing this. For them to overall shred, it's only those two things. There's no in between because of that one second TTK. Most of you are using the damage perks or other means. And there's also one on this list that really isn't getting too much love that I want to bring to your attention. And as I go through the list, certain ones can be changed out. One and two, three and four. But I'm ranking them on their overall kit with what they can do and how they're bypassing things. So starting off at number five, and number five and four can be switched, number five is Royal Chase. And the reason why it's here, it's old, you would need it from Xur now, possibly Dares. I think it's from Dares. Let me know down in the comment section, but mostly Xur. And in comparison with what it has, the other options, I still feel it would be at number five. You could possibly switch it with four, but look in your vault, its value is multi-kill clip. Get a kill, reload, it deals 70 to the head with multi-kill clip times one, a three tap. There's the value, because if not, it's still the base one second TT. TK. The pairing perk, if you have it, no distractions. But anything else will work. No big deal if you don't have it. I don't anymore. And there's nothing about it that would make me wish that I had one. And at number four, Staccato. It's obtainable right now. And as a start with any of these scouts, Radiant will bring you to 67 per crit. Hunter is the easiest to do and to showcase. The power with these things is the lethal 0.67 TTK, the three shot. It goes from a weapon that's barely getting by to a weapon where you're ripping people and getting them right out of your way. 201 damage. Staccato has something like Incandescent, which is great for PvE because you can do that at a distance. And in the Crucible, it can work on larger maps, but you're still left with that base one second TTK most of the time. And if you don't play your cards right, you're going to get eaten alive by other weapons within that range. Now, Focus Fury requires half the magazine to be precision hits, and when you do that for 11 seconds, you get 20% more damage. That brings the crit to 72.9, the body damage to 45.6, and this is what you've been seeing with the staccato gameplay. A two-head one body is 191.4. Don't count on that, but it can and will down some lower resilience players. Once you're in Focus Fury, you're three tapping, and there's a high chance you're gonna loop Focus Fury again and reset the counter. It also has an built-in Sero Synergy, because it's a Seros weapon, for the flinch reduction after you reload. And then there's Rampage. This is the only 180 with Rampage. Large magazine, get a kill at that base TTK or Radiant 3 tap, go into Rampage. Rampage is 10%, the crit jumps to 67. It's three tapping with Rampage. There's the value. Those two things, and most of you, if you decided to try Staccato, or maybe when they drop, I would be searching for Rampage. I personally love Focus Fury, but it's not instant like Rampage. Rampage just kind of flows. And honestly, with this healing meta, tagging people over and over, as they heal, Focus Fury's been working out. But Staccato can hang. It really can with all of these things. So stay in the proper range and utilize what it has going for it. And Royal Chase, Staccato, they can be switched with four and five, five and four, but the top three I am firm on. And number three, Tears of Contrition. 
the Nightmare Scout. Now, I did make a review on this before it was buffed. Now it is buffed. And earlier I said, when you use these, you focus on two things. There's really no in-between, either pure dueling or damage. This is the only pure dueling scout as far as a 180. And the role that I have is the one that I recommend now and what I recommended in the review. When you take into account high stability, max resilience, no distractions, times two unflinching, that's all for you to receive flinch. And on the other side, you have explosive payload to make them flinch. This is it. And all of those things on, no distractions. Double unflinching, max resilience, 69 stability. It's 65.5% flinch reduction. And that kind of helps you stay in the pocket as you're dueling, making sure that you land your TTK. And if you get knocked off a little bit, it's a two crit, two body. Even though it's one second, very achievable to do with this thing. And with these things, range is your ally. You need to play to that strength. You have to. It duels beautifully. I wish I had this combination on other weapons. You're not going to get knocked around. You're going to knock them around. It works out great. It's the best dueling 180 scout by far. At number two, and number two and one can be flipped. I'm going to tell you why in a moment. This one here, no one's really talking about. It was somewhat written off when it came out. The Vision of Confluence. Vault of Glass. It's the only 180 to have Kill Clip. There's big value. You can still go get Vision of Confluence right now. It's going to have Time Lost Weeks coming up. You get it from Conflux, you get it from Oracles, Templar, the first part of the raid, those back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back encounters. You can get it from random chests if you've obtained it, and if not, at the end, you can spend spoils. There's a one out of six chance Kill Clip's gonna fall on that last column, and honestly, that's what matters. If you don't like the pairing perk, just try it a later date to get that better perk, but Kill Clip's money, that's where it's at. Mine has rewind rounds, it's worthless on that end, but I don't really care about that. You have things like Killing Wind Kill Clip, Surplus Kill Clip, Tunnel Vision Kill Clip, even Wellspring Kill Clip. That's at least going to be better than Rewind Rounds, but I have no idea why this isn't seen more. I think it's because 180s haven't been relevant in the Crucible for a long time, and when Vision came out, even though it had Kill Clip, it was extremely tough for the archetype. And I would think as time went on, as the vaults needed some cleaning, those Kill Clip Vision of Confluences were the ones to create space. But with Kill Clip, it deals 81 to the head, it can 2 crit 1 body. It can also obviously 3 crit. With Radiant, it does, I, I believe, 90? A lot of big damage. And as you've been seeing, you can Kill Clip cancel, keep the chain going. It's honestly one of the most powerful 180s in the game. No one's really using it. Same things apply. You can go Radiant, 3 tap, go right into Kill Clip, start doing really big damage. There's a lot of power here. At number one, the Box Breathing Hung Jury. Mine is heating up Box Breathing, 76 range, 75 stability. It's great. With Box Breathing active, it deals 99 to the head. You can end up two crit, one body on players. Now, Box Breathing is the main selling point. It's overall usage, it's kit. It's saying that you can play this scout anywhere in Trials 6v6, 3v3, and always be a threat with a 0.67 TTK, wherever, whenever, at any time. But Hung Jury is gone you would have had to obtained it. And if not, that's where Vision comes in, to that number one spot. That's the only reason they would be flipped, is that if you don't have it, you never had it, Vision should be on your radar if you want to use these 180 scouts. As far as kill perks, it's still obtainable and farmable. And a 0.67 at near any range is something that can't be argued, not debatable. It's strong. And that's what makes Hung Jury take that number one overall. All of them could three tap, but Hung Jury is an anytime, any place type of deal with no other external factors such as Radiant, a Rift, Inertia, things like that. We're slowly seeing these scouts being used, but remember, they have a very painful base one second TTK. You can't run away from that. And that's why I think it's going to at least keep them in line in check. Box breathing is the big outlier, a huge one. They have high points. They have low points. They will be, or at very least can be, very destructive and oppressive on larger maps, Midtown, things like that. That's where you will see them. And no joke, when they get going, they are extremely powerful. When you start going on Kill Clip 3 taps, Focus Fury 3 taps, Rampage 3 taps, it's very powerful. Look in your vaults, try them if you want. Each one has something to offer, and for them to perform, you need to watch what they're asking you to do. Box, Kill Clip, Focus Fury. You want to stick to that because the in-between isn't really anything special. What's special is activating all those external damage perks. So if you're new here, remember hit the subscribe button and if you are subscribed thank you so much for your support i would like to know your thoughts on the 180 scouts it goes all the way back to year one before i really took them seriously so this is kind of nice i want to know your overall thoughts on how they're performing if you like them if you don't like them and which ones are you using thank you for watching and until the next one i am cool guy